Hey, what's up? This is Rodney Eastman. You're going to be listening to me with Tortoise and the Hare. And you are back in the Tortoise and Hare experience. You just heard the song Rona by our guest, which we will talk to in a moment. You can find him on Facebook, facebook.com slash Eastman official. And uh, just like every show, we always like to start off with an experience. We do. So uh, who should go first this time? Um, you know, I always like when you go first. <laughs> Thanks. Wow. <laughs> you know, you get it all out there. It's so much fun. Because, you know. Yeah. Um, okay, so I got to tell you about an experience that I've been experiencing. If that makes sense. Yeah, of course. Uh, um, so, as you know, and I think everybody experiences this, and uh, it happens to me kind of frequently, I'm running low on gas right now, and my car... This is what's stupid about cars, and I, this is why I need to be in charge of manufacturing every single vehicle, is it tells you that you're low on fuel, but it doesn't tell you how long you have. Like my car says, okay, once you hit 30 miles, you're low on fuel, and that's all. It doesn't give me an accurate, okay, you have one mile left, because that's the thing that I need to know. I need to know when I have one mile left, because then I could start looking for a gas station. So right now I'm, I'm I'm going through that right now. You know, I'm there's an easy way to tell that. You go. Yeah, by you just run out of gas. Well, you go by your mileage. So, test it out one time and write down exactly when you ran out of gas. You know, so from this point, from where the light comes on, to when you actually run out of gas, test that out and see exactly how many miles that is, and write it down. And then keep an eye on it. Or you could buy a car made after 2010. Exactly. Really? I have a yeah. new car. My, my ex-girlfriend yeah. has a, a, a like a probably 2011 Nissan, and it has that feature. When you're running low on gas, you just hit the little yeah. thing on the on the speedometer, and it tells you exactly how many miles you have to go before you're empty. Yeah. But I have the same problem in my car. I was just thinking about that today. I haven't had a of you know gas prices lately and this economy and being a starving artist uh, <laughs> you know, this month you seem pretty skinny too so i can verify that you are starving yeah He's no fit. but that's, not that, i'm on that starving artist diet you know forget <laughs> adkins or weight watchers <laughs> or slim fast you know just become an artist and, you know, try yeah. and live in ho- hollywood yeah you'll, you'll starve uh, to death you'll get skinny quick <laughs> Okay, Max, what has been your experience? Oh, gosh, you know, I, I have a crazy life, as all of our listeners know. I do many things, um, being a practitioner. Uh, did you know that, that I'm, I'm a Reiki practitioner um, in uh, Beverly Hills at the Integrative Wellness Center? And I treat patients all the time for various things. I treat a lot of uh, musicians and a lot of actors and sports stars. Recently, I had somebody come in, and uh, you know, they're a longtime actor, a lot of difficulties in life, and uh, they heard that I was doing a workshop, and I do these workshops every now and then on quantum physics and Reiki and, you know, kind of melding our, our worlds together for healing and ascension. And he heard that I was doing this, and he was like, you know, I'm really curious about this. And he's like one of those old, you know, actor types, you know, that really uh, doesn't doesn't want to um, let go too easily. Mm-hmm. You, who, you know who, what I mean? Who does want to let go? If you're an actor, you want to be <laughs> acting forever. Well, no, but I know? mean, you want to let go of all of the fear that you build up. And, you know, you want to express things and, and move on. Let go from, of emotion. Yeah. You know, move on from those blocks. But, you know, a lot of times actors want to hold on to the pain because they think that they can use it later on, you know, for some emotion. But you don't really have to do that. So, you know, trying to counsel them to get uh, get back to center. Um, you know, I work with people like Gary Busey and uh, his son Jake and, you know, um, <laughs> and they're fascinating, fascinating people to work with. But this actor was... Uh, it was so interesting. I want names. Mm, I can't give you <laughs> all the names. names. You know. <laughs> Gary, Gary and Jake I can use okay. because that's already very public. There's, If you go on uh, YouTube, I believe that there's video of me working yeah. on Gary uh, in front of like a thousand people. Yeah, We, we posted that on, on one of our shows because you mentioned that and I posted that video <laughs> on one of the experience shows. Yeah, it's, you know, it's an interesting little life I have. 
Um, but this uh, this actor, um, when he came in, he he had all of these stories and all of these blocks, and I was like, you know, you just need to be silent, you know. And I think that as a part of Hollywood and uh, in the music scene and all of that, we forget to be silent mm. and you know just hear ourselves and hear our inner voices and be still. So teaching somebody how to be still is, you know, it's very difficult. And uh, well, if only we had an actor to comment on this. Right. <laughs> I wonder who we could find. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> is there an actor in the house? Yeah. <laughs> let's let's introduce our amazing guest, our first guest of the day. He's on the couch of love. I call that the casting couch. I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. Ah, well, <laughs> I do not know what you're talking about. <laughs> Person, not from personal experience, I gotta say. So the amazing Rodney Eastman is here with us today on oh, thank you. the Tortoise and Thanks the Thanks for having experience. me, guys. Thanks for coming. You look lovely today, Aww. Max. Oh, well, I thought you were you look No, you look great, too. I'm, yeah. You're not <laughs> really my type. <laughs> I should be. Yeah, I'm hot. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. No, you know what? <laughs> Turtle just lost an incredible amount of weight. He looks fantastic. He's swimming. He's, like, getting in shape and um yeah we're we're really proud of you yeah thanks yeah um real quick we shared some experiences would you like uh, to share any experience that you're going through right now uh you don't have to well can i share an ex of experience that i ex of somebody else's experience that yeah uh yeah i have a, <laughs> a neighbor a neighbor downstairs uh um and i live in this great building in hollywood in uh in 2017, it'll be 100 years old, nice. which is pretty rare in a town that, you know, tears down everything, you know, like there's no respect for sort of architectural history in Los Angeles. So it's pretty amazing to live in a, I, ne I live near Sunset and Vine and uh, I have a picture from 1920 and uh, an aerial view. There used to be a, a big studio. The first studio in Hollywood was on Sunset and Vine and there's an aerial shot of that studio taken in 1920 and up in the top right hand corner you could see my building right wow. there pretty great um but I, I and it's a really great building there's four apartments and uh like the guys across the hall are these sort of old hollywood veterans and the guy downstairs manages bands and then the other uh people downstairs there's a uh, one uh the girl is an agent and uh, they're both agents, actually. Um, but the guy is uh, gay. And so he was up working at Gay Pride in San Francisco. And he was at a booth. He was working for a promotions company. And uh, there was some gang activity going on. And this whole altercation, there was like a big gang fight out in the street. And this guy pulled out a gun. And uh, he saw everything that was going on. and at the last minute ducked behind his booth to take cover once he saw the gun and the guy saw him out of the corner of his eye and shot at the booth <gasps> and shot him in the leg oh my god shattered his femur and uh he was about to go all around the country for a month at different gay prides uh, doing promotions and this was his first one got this oh, great big job man. and completely dis the guy's a gymnast Oh. and uh, just completely shattered his life it, uh, no pun intended but like shattered his femur and completely destroyed his life in the blink of an eye uh, wow. unbelievable and um, I was just so shocked when they first told me I started laughing um, because it was so absurd and so random and this is the nicest guy you could ever meet in your life they were like Trevor got shot I was like wait <laughs> what are you talking about? That's Trevor got shot. How is that even possible? And then they told me the story. And it's just, you know, all of this, uh, you know, all this sort of gun violence in the news. And and it's all very sort of, uh, you know, I, it, I'm, I, I'm very detached from, I don't own guns. I've never owned guns. Uh, you know, I didn't grow up in that sort of lifestyle. And and so like I, I see stuff on the news about gun violence and it's very abstract and then all of a sudden someone that I know very well that lives in my building, his whole life is completely altered in the blink of an eye because 
some guy had a gun. You know, it's, it's pretty, crazy. pretty, pretty crazy. incredible. We live in a tough world. Yeah. Well, I mean, your life has been changed within a blink of an eye. I remember mm-hmm. reading uh, about you driving uh, home. You're actually driving uh, with your girlfriend. It's yeah. That yeah. But, uh, that almost over 20 years ago now. Uh, coming back from Vegas, uh, I, I was uh, my girlfriend was in a band called the Nymphs, uh, which was a huge mm-hmm. band in Hollywood in the 90s and. Uh, we were on a little mini tour and I was driving her and they did a show in Vegas and they had to be back in LA the next day for a show at the Palace, which is now, it's on Vine. Right. I don't, I don't yeah. know what it's what called, called now. now. I don't know. I don't go out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have fun. Yeah. Um, so uh, we were leaving and the valet lost uh, my keys to my car. So we had to wait like two hours while the locksmith came and... Uh, and you know, while we were waiting, uh, I was very irresponsible in in my youth, and uh, drank a little bit, and gambled, and finally got on the road about two thirty in the morning, and ended up uh, falling asleep at the wheel, going about eighty five miles an hour, drove into a ditch, flew headfirst through the windshield one hundred and fifty feet, mm. landed on my head, fractured my skull. Uh, they had to come get me in a helicopter. I died four times. I was in a coma for 11 days and uh, and like just so fortunate to even be sitting here and the and really the total miracle is that I came out of it with no brain damage I ruptured my carotid artery which is the wow. vein that carries blood and oxygen to your vein to your brain and uh, yeah to come out of that with no lasting uh, you know effects and no brain damage which some people might debate right you know <laughs> but pretty, well, pretty miraculous and yeah i mean that's that's life you know we make all these plans for the future and you know what we want to do and i think people forget to live in the moment and live right. in today and because it, it really can all be taken away right that's what i tell my patients every day yeah. is living right now not in yesterday not in tomorrow but being centered in your moment and you know really uh, appreciating life because right. it's, it's gone so fast and you know uh, great that gr- the great book you know uh, The Power of Now by right. Eckhart Tolle is mm-hmm. a real sort of kind of textbook approach to sort of getting into the moment and, right. and, and I'm really conscious of all that you know mm-hmm. I'm really conscious of being in the moment and being living in the now and being in the present and uh, and I slip out of that uh Constantly, you know? yeah. I mean, I might, I might be in the moment, maybe ten percent of my day. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, there's always something that you can you go back to, you know, that drama from your past. So, you, you know, on those days, you're like, oh man, I wish I had that, or if I had done this. But you really can't live that way because you know that's done. That, yeah, it already happened. You got to yeah. move forward. Right. You know. Right, but you know, we all sit around here and, and we know that on an intellectual level. And, you know, it, it's not like a a, a a rare theory nowadays, you know. Um, but still, uh, the way that society is, and I feel like the way that we've all been programmed, uh, everyone knows that, oh, yeah, it's all about living in the moment and living every day for, you know, like it's your last. But very few people actually live in that space. It's a, And it's a, it takes real sort of discipline to, to get to that point and stay there. Yeah, you know? for sure. Everyone's walking around afraid of everything, myself included. And I catch myself all the time and just realize like, like I'm so afraid of so many things and for what reason? Because mm-hmm. because it's the unknown. It's that, That's what fear is. Fear isn't I'm afraid of something. If you already know the outcome, then you're not afraid of it. When you don't know the outcome, that's when you're afraid of it. Right. But what I liked about you too, and and this is why I'm like a little hesitant to say that you're very fearful, is because when you got here, uh, Max had some coffee for you, and uh, I noticed that you went and you got all the because um, she brought different types of uh, cream, uh-huh. and you poured them all in. I was like, are you fucking crazy? <laughs> Mixing your cream? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Mixing your cream. <laughs> I live on it's the edge. Man. Totally I, edge. I'll, I'll use any kind of half and half. Hair. <laughs> I'm going for it. 
I was like, man, how's that taste, by the way? Did, did it come out good? Amazing. Or? I'm, yeah. This is, I've, you know, I've been up since eight this morning, which is a rarity for me. <laughs> and this is oh my, my first cup of coffee, so I'm really excited. <laughs> so you really live that rock and roll life now, where you're, you know, staying up late and. I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> Never I don't, sleeping. I don't know if it's really a rock and roll lifestyle. I just, you know, I don't have a nine to five job, and mm-hmm. you know, it's just sort of the hours I keep. You know, I, I'm not like up partying every night and doing blow and getting drunk. And, yeah, and doing all the sort thing. of. I can't, I can't take that road anymore. I'm just, I'm too old. I can't. Oh, yeah. Now I, get, I, you know, I'd go out for a you know, crazy night and it takes me three days. Over. Yeah, we went out for a crazy night once. Um, my girlfriend Augie Duke, who's a wonderful actress uh, from Bad Kids Go to Hell, and our friend Chanel Ryan was having a birthday party. So we picked up Rodney, and at that place that you live, which was amazing, and Augie is so funny. She's in her in her little car and drives over his uh, his whole yard and over the curb. Do you remember At that? my instruction. Yeah, I was yeah. like, oh my gosh, this is like a really nice yard. <laughs> uh, that was a crazy night. There was paparazzi. That was, a crazy night. Whole, that was the first night we met. Yeah, it was. Yeah, we it ended was. up at some Baby random time. Hollywood yeah. douchebag night spot. Yeah, we did. we did. I think there was some TMZ people yep. we talked to. And yeah. That was fun. It's yeah. crazy. And now we uh, we signed together. Um, well, not together, but, you know, in the same room at these uh, celebrity conventions. Yeah, yeah. conventions. He's on the conventions circuit. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> well, he's also on the music circuit because we just yeah. heard your song. And uh, I, I like that. I mean, because I got a bunch of songs that I, you know, that I got to pick and choose from, which thank you, by the way. Yeah. And uh, that song uh, that we just played earlier, Rona, that was the one that stood out for me. And I noticed that in your music, you're very quirky, if, if that's an accurate, you know. I, I think so. I, I'll take that as a compliment. Yeah, oh, totally. <laughs> I didn't mean that as like. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, it, quirky just means different. And I think if, if in any art form, if you don't have something that separates you, that makes you different or unique kind of you know business in the marketplace it's hard to you know put art in the marketplace in the same sentence but it's sort of the reality I, I could totally hear that song and see it like on a hallmark commercial or something like that you know when well, i was that, listening to that that's song. that you must not have listened to the lyrics because it's definitely not a Hallmark commercial but, type card. But that's the thing. Well, have you heard Hallmark lately? Right. Games? But whoever listens to lyrics like Lust for Life, when it was on that uh, American, you know, the, the, the cruise ship, uh-huh. you know, right. you, you know, it's like uh, the people that really know the lyrics are like, uh, isn't he talking about like Coke and like, you yeah, know, you know, and it is on a Cari- Royal Caribbean cruise or something like that. <laughs> That, but that's really depressing what you just said who listens to the lyrics yeah. I listen to yeah. the lyrics I mean I think you know I, I think it's sort of the most important thing about music for me you know but that's what's great about music like any art form it's all subjective you know it's all about some people listen to the drums some people listen to the keyboards some people hear just melody and some people key in on the lyrics you know it it's whatever it is to you. For me, it's lyrics come kind of last because I'm listening to the beat and I'm listening to like, you know, the instrumentation. And then after a while, it's like, okay, now I can focus on the lyrics because now I know where everything's coming in and right. it's just a process for me. Yeah, of course. I think that's the same for, for most people, you know, mm-hmm. myself included, you know, just, uh, but I think that, I mean, I grew up in, you know, 70s and 80s and 90s and and I feel like lyrics were very important in in that period and people were trying to say something with the music that they put out and and the artists that appealed the most to me were artists that were doing that that were saying something with some meaning you know who was your favorite artist back then <sighs> Well, I, I have a real sort of quirky sort of, uh, <laughs> of taste in yeah. music, you know. I'm, I mean, my favorite, uh, one of my favorite bands, 
God, I'm outing myself as a total music nerd. Uh, one of my favorite bands is Steely Dan. Okay. Um, because they, uh, their music is so slick and well produced and yep. tight and uh, great melodies and the whole thing. And it's so poppy and the sort of candy floss sometimes you know almost like easy listening but if you listen to the lyrics the lyrics are incredibly dark mm -hmm. uh the you know their songs are all full of uh you know broken-hearted love affairs and drug addiction and gambling and uh, underage girls and you know <laughs> all all things i know nothing about um <laughs> but i love i was and and a sense of humor you know and i always loved that contradiction, that really sort of slick sound uh, with something deeper under the surface. And then also just, uh, you know, I grew up on Zeppelin and uh, <clears throat> and I was really into metal when I was a kid. You know, I loved Iron Maiden and Metallica yeah. and and, um, and then, you know, on the, I, and then uh, I loved early sort of, you know, proto-punk glam artist velvet underground david bowie loved girl, velvet underground of mine, loved you know. velvet oh. i was like burping into the um the microphone yeah <laughs> i'm a fan of my burps Very yeah sexy. but it doesn't smell so good <laughs> i need to tell you it smells like beer yeah it's not its pleasant smell uh by the way uh you just heard uh rodney eastman's song love like that which was uh, uh what i like to call an instant request uh, by Max. Yeah. And uh, for more information on Rodney, uh, make sure to find him on his Facebook, facebook.com slash Eastman official. And tell me, uh, Max, what was it about that song that made you gravitate towards that? You know, it just, some songs just, they call to you, you know, and you can connect to them. That's, uh, that's just what it was for me. You know, listening to all of Rodney's stuff, and um, I actually, I snuck in one night when he was playing at the piano bar and sat in the back of the room and just kind of checked him out because you know first off he's really good looking so he's you know it's easy to go and watch somebody yeah. like that play oh. and uh, easy on the eyes yeah it's easy on the eyes i wanted to see what the fuss was so you know because i knew him as an actor and you know and i i you know knew about the music and um just went to like check out the vibe so i sat in the back and you know was watching and was like damn Oh, he's got something. This is really different than anything that I've heard in a long time in Hollywood. And, you know, it's, you know, it is quirky, like you said. And, you know, it's something that everybody can relate to. You know, there, there's an experience in every one of your songs that you can go, yeah, you know what, I understand that. And oh, uh, I'm, I'm in that line. Really appreciate that. Yeah, you so yeah. we, we talked a little bit about your acting, a little bit about your music, but I want to know the transition of acting to, you know, musicianship uh, and, and, and why you decided to do that. Because there's a lot of actors that try to be musicians and it just doesn't pan out. I don't know why. It should pan out, you know, but for some reason it just never does. It's, it's, there's always like either you're one or the other. Right. Well, I feel like... Uh, for musicians, and if you look through history, uh, it'll bear out my theory. Uh, it's a lot easier for m musicians to be taken seriously as an actor than it is for actors to be taken seriously as musicians. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I don't really make any sort of differentiation. You know, as a kid, uh, I became interested in both sort of simultaneously, you know. When I was five years old, my parents bought me a violin and forced me to take lessons for five years, and I hated it, but I'm so grateful that to them now because it, it gave me a, a, a background in, in music, and, um, and I've always had just, you know, I've just always loved music, like you were saying, Max, like music has just always spoken to me like very few other things and um, and I don't know I've never really made the distinction between actor and musician growing up uh, I was more musical uh, you know I didn't have an outlet from uh, my acting chops 
uh, my, the first instrument I took really seriously was drums. Uh, started playing drums when I was about 12 years old and was in high school bands, you know, all through high school, playing backyard parties and, you know, doing covers. And, and then, uh, you know, I moved to Hollywood uh, when I was about uh, 19, 20. And, uh, you know, space is really limited in Hollywood. You know, when I lived in sort of the suburbs and uh, actually grew up in East LA so it wasn't really East Los yeah Sorry. it Sorry. wasn't <laughs> like leave it to beaver suburbs <laughs> right. it was like you know the barrio suburbs but you know there was always a, a garage to practice in and, and uh, you know I, I started acting when I turned 18 and I moved to Hollywood and uh, there was no place to play drums in my apartment and and then just sort of acting and the lifestyle just sort of took over you know I was young I was really caught up and uh, music went way on the back burner for years and then after the accident that I talked about it you know my face was sort of I was lucky I didn't get any like gashes on my face but I was really banged up and I talked really slow mm -hmm. and um, and as I didn't think I was ever even going to act again. And I started playing music and just sort of uh, as for fun. And I and I kind of taught myself to play guitar. And and that was sort of uh, integral to sort of like my rehab um, because it gave me a different artistic outlet. And that's carried through to present day. Um, you know, acting is not a nine to five job. And even if you're working all the time, it's very inconsistent. And after every acting job I do, I, there's always a come down. Uh, mm -hmm. When I'm working on a set, when I'm acting, I'm in my element, I'm feeling good, I'm feeling validated every day, in love with what I do. And when that experience is over, there's always a depression that follows mm -hmm. and if I didn't have some other creative outlet to put my energy into whether it's music or now trying to get behind the camera I've made a couple of short films recently and if, if I didn't have those other creative outlets uh, I don't know what I would do don't you find that um, in music for for myself as a musician I find that music is my therapy mm -hmm. that um, you know, like you, I had a, a pretty bad accident when I was younger. Really? Yeah, 15, I had a, a surfing accident. Mm. Um, I was surfing in Puerto Rico and hit some underlying rocks and crushed my knees. So I spent a year and a half in a wheelchair. Wow. So in that time, I had nothing to do but just play music. Mm -hmm. And then it seemed like just right after that, at 16... I got in a car accident and I went through the windshield just like you did. Wow. And um, thank, thank God that I kept my head down and it hit the back of my head, you know. So, you know, it was uh, almost took off my <laughs> my brain. But it's the same thing. And if I didn't have music to get me through that time, I don't think that I could have. Right. You know? Do you find that turtle in, in like all of your experiences? Do you find that music brings you to that comfort zone where you can just... You Actually, know, no. Um, I, I feel music for me is more of a, an escapism. Um, I, I play guitar. Now, when I say I play guitar, I don't mean like I go out in the street and, you know, or perform in front of people. You know, for me, um, my guitar playing is, is an extremely personal thing. It's, it's like, okay, I'm just going to play for me. This is, you know, me just playing around and just messing with sound you know because if you, you you could sometimes get some strange sounds out of that guitar sure. you know and you're like okay uh i'll probably never ever be able to use that in any other song just in reality you know well that's the that's the difference for me between acting and music uh, music um I'm, I'm in in when i'm acting i'm i'm bringing somebody else's vision to life I'm saying somebody else's words and, and sort of breathing life into, into that. But music is deeply personal and uh, it's a very vulnerable art form, I, I think. Um, and, and I never have played music with an eye to any sort of career. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to do a couple of US tours with my old band and, and 
record some music in the studio, uh, but I never think of it as a, a career path. Uh, um, I've been fortunate enough to be able to support myself acting my whole life, and I, I know I'm really lucky to have been blessed with that. Um, but music has always been a completely personal outlet, and uh, you know, playing a show in front of I'm, I've been lucky. I've gotten to play in front of 16,000 people live. But playing in front of six people is a way more intimate, mm -hmm. vulnerable right. experience. Uh, and you know, I never get nervous now uh, when I'm auditioning or on a set. But uh, playing a show, and that is, uh, that's really, really putting yourself out there. Because cool. well, it's my words. It's, it's my experience. Right. It's my feeling. You know, and and sort of, you know, putting that up on a on a platform for people to judge because people do judge art, you know. And there's a lot of bad art and and bad acting and bad music and sort of, you know, putting that out to people is an incredibly vulnerable experience. Mm -hmm. Well, let's get a little bit more vulnerable as we get really intimate. <laughs> we have a guitar right here oh, nice. uh, in front of us. Happen? I don't even know. Happen? It disappeared. Yeah. It's the magic of the experience, as I say. Things just That's happen. Right. Things nice. happen here at the Tortoise and the Hare experience. I love that. Yeah. In the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I don't know. Do you, do you feel like playing a song? Do you feel like playing to, to, play to an intimate crowd? Yeah. <laughs> this is very intimate, yeah. by this the way. This is very intimate. <laughs> this is that just don't, what I don't mind the millions of people that are watching. Wait. I'm going to be playing you a new song called Getting Old, and here we go. Hanging off the ledge of a 13th story window, should I climb back up or just let go? Every step's demanded dues, fees, and admissions. Oh my God, how much more do I owe? If time is money, then I've lost a fortune in gold. This must be what it feels like getting old. This must be what it feels like getting old I'm forgetting how to love and how to listen My hair and my mood is going gray It's become a nine to five job just existing too much overtime, too little pay Pain makes you stronger, so now I've got a bulletproof soul How much longer can I rock and roll? This must be what it feels like getting old your arms around me, baby, do what you're told. Bring me warm salvation, heart of gold. Bring me sex and drugs and rock and roll. This must be what it feels like getting old. This must be what it feels like getting old. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> In studio uh, exclusive. Yeah, that was badass. 
very okay. badass it was funny um and, and you were saying this is that you know that that guitar is not your guitar not my guitar <laughs> thank you to danny for learning yeah. this, that guitar thank you so much we'll be hearing from her in a couple minutes yeah um and 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 honestly you know like i was saying like now i feel so sort of you know naked you know, <laughs> so. we like you that way oh <laughs> thank yes, you yes if you want to yeah. come over here and be naked with us we maybe we can that. make that a feature uh, yes show. yeah absolutely yeah. rodney's naked minute <laughs> deal <laughs> no <laughs> we will hold you to that you don't even know <laughs> okay. don't don't test us man. Right. But do, do you have abs that's what makes nakedness I, the most i is, totally is, have a six pack let me say it's just still in the bag okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm working on it you know <laughs> i'm trying to get you know my goal is to get you know super cut up for you know my birthday which is coming up on july 20th i don't think oh, I'm gonna nice. make it. Happy birthday. you can i i can get close you know but by the end of the summer you know i think i should be pretty good next summer in a yeah. bathing suit watch out Deal. it's all over <laughs> for, for me like I, like i've been telling people i'm like just wait till next summer because that's when i'm speedo ready yeah because well, that's a dream of mine I don't know if you ever want to be speedo. No. Okay. Yeah. You know what? A lot of people. Visual? A lot of people tell me that, and I say that the speedo works when there's the right body. You know. Right. And that and and girls are get very turned on by a guy in a that looks great in a speedo. And the right really? country too. Yeah. yeah. No. You don't right. think the speedo is not an no. Americana? No. 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 It's not. Not last. No. And it's not in yeah, West Hollywood. It works good. okay perfectly. Fuck it, I'm going to Europe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're, in, <laughs> you're you know, if you Ibiza, you know, go okay. for yeah. it. You know, you'll be gold. Okay, <laughs> but I don't think you want to sport the speedo no. in Huntington Beach. No, no. well, no. It's it's it's, it's it's only for the ladies. <laughs> yeah, but no, no I'm I a lady. Yeah. Don't do it. Right. Yeah, Please. ladies, uh, show of hands, no. speedo. Yeah. <laughs> There no. are no hands up. In Danny's hand is up. It no, wants to be up. <laughs> no, ah, uh. uh -uh. no, that for sure, like, Danny. Sort of, you know, a, a, you know, board short, sort of like okay. a, 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 you know, like an yeah. inch too big, sort of hanging low, so you get the yes, little. Yes, th that lines is it right, right there. there. Yeah, Those yeah. side, the side yeah, ab yeah. thing right. that goes down. We're trying over to work on hip. that. Oh yeah. man, that that's hot. But not right, Danny? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah she no, she agrees with me. I got those I'm lines coming in. So that, I'm that's those. hot. I like when a guy is wearing like board shorts that are too big. Okay. Exactly what he said. It leaves something to the imagination. I don't want to see somebody in a speedo and like know all his kibbles and bits. I do. Right. You know? <laughs> right. And you don't want to. And you don't want to know that you, you know the dude you might want to date has a better ass than you. You know, well that's, I'm not that's saying a given. That's, that's, that's a not given. gonna happen. You know, <laughs> no, but yeah. you haven't seen my ass. Yeah. <laughs> Will we see it tonight? Um, <laughs> we're not even gonna go. Okay, there. you always gotta ask. <laughs> yeah, you what know, are you doing later? <laughs> 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 maybe, maybe we'll see Max's ass tonight. Yeah, yeah. Know. and, and don't trust everything <laughs> you see on the internet. It may not be my ass. <laughs> maybe um, my ass. <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> I have a really nice ass. I'm just saying. Yeah, I hire a body double just to go out for me. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been a body double, oh, and that's a really wood, interesting I job. I was for um, little known fact uh, for Linda Fiorentino in Vision Quest. Nice. Yeah, that Taking was it like back. that was it. I was like, you know what? This is ridiculous. I am not doing somebody's ass work. Right. I'm not doing it. Right. Hey, if they'd pay me, I'd do it. But no. I don't think I'm. You know, and all respect to because uh, I have a lot of friends who that's all that they do. Uh, I know this girl Shelly Michelle. That's her entire career is just being a body double. Right. And all respect to him, but, you know, I'm an actor. Right. And I, I just don't want to be somebody's ass. Yeah, that's my take. That's there, my take on it. There's your take. I don't know. Okay. So, um, Rodney, thank you so much for uh, being a part of this experience. Oh, thanks for having yeah. me on. Yeah. yeah. Definitely an experience. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. I'd, I'd love to come back sometime. Yes, yeah. we would love to have you back. Definitely. Uh, and where are you uh, doing any shows coming up? Where can uh, we find I you? I don't have anything scheduled, but I'm sure I'll have something probably coming up in the next six weeks. And uh, if y'all could uh, follow me on my Facebook page, that would be great. It's uh, facebook.com forward slash Eastman Official. And uh, do you have a Twitter? I do have a Twitter. Well, I give the Twitter. It's uh, just my name, Rodney Eastman. Um, and and uh, I'm just sort of catching up with all this sort of yeah. new media. And but I'm mm -hmm. I'm I'm getting it. 
and um, and also yeah I just uh, you know on the on the on the acting tip uh, I've got a couple of projects I just finished that uh, I'm really excited about uh, there's this kid named Ryan Michael who's uh, this young filmmaker he's only 20 years old and he's just brilliant and uh, we just finished a little short film that uh, I think it you know too early to tell but uh, it, it's definitely gonna get some recognition and uh, and I also just finished a film uh, called camouflage uh, this kid named Kyle T Cohen's first film and that was amazing because I've always played like a bad boy and you know trouble can imagine sort of youth and but I play a dad in this one you know and I have like a 12 year old son and you know my hair is combed and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, I am. I'm growing up, and I'm sort of trying to, you know, get out there and sort of rebrand myself as as an adult. And, uh, and but both of these projects, you know, I'm really into uh, working with young filmmakers and sort of bringing my experience to the table and sort of uh, learning from, you know, kids that are sort of on the cutting edge and doing stuff. And like you were talking about earlier, to bring it full circle about actors not wanting to let go. And right. you know, I came to sort of uh, you know it sort of came to artistic maturity in, in the era when film and television were at its peak of sort of corporate money and power and uh, that has all sort of disappeared and and I can hold on to that old idea of what the business was um, mm-hmm. and and never work bitch again. and moan right <laughs> or I can sort of embrace the future and so yeah. I've been really interested in a lot of new media and, and truly independent film and sort of the whole DIY ethic and still doing, you know, jobs that are going to pay the rent, but in, in between, you know, working with these young people that remind me why I'm doing it, you know, and sort of remind me of myself when I was just starting out. And so, yeah, so the, so the, the, the short film is called uh, Burden of the Shepherd and the feature is called uh, Camouflage and, and those should be... Uh, available somewhere in the next couple of months so That's really awesome. excited about that yeah so uh log on to facebook.com slash easement official and i'll have all the links to your twitter and i know you have a youtube too i um, do and i'll have all those links on and the show notes and all those links are also on my facebook page so perfect perfect